Hi everyone, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. It's February 17th, 2022, and I have a book review for you today. Uh, for once, a book that is somewhat contemporary. In fact, I think this year is its 50th anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. It is Richard Adams's Watership Down, the uh, famous, uh, I guess, sometimes classified as a as a children's story, sometimes not. Uh, I'll get into that in the body of the review. But um, <clears throat> I think you can kind of see the, the cover there. If you don't know what it's about, um, you'll soon learn. <laughs> but um, this is one of the, uh, the first novel that Richard Adams came out with um, in, uh, like I said, I think 1972. Uh, it has been looking up at me I'm currently sitting at my dining room table, and there's a box of books opposite my table uh, underneath a window, and it's been looking up at me for about two years. I, bu I bought it at a, a charity shop right across the street from my house, and it's been lying on top of the stack right below the window um, for a while. And the only encouragement I had and needed to, to in order to pick it up was that I saw it on a list of one of the 50 greatest uh, English language books of the 20th century. So uh, I always impulsively scroll through those and see how many I've read and am inevitably disappointed with how many I've read. But um, the novel's reputation sort of precedes it. I think everyone at least recognizes the name. And, um, and, and it's sort of precarious uh, position as sort of, uh, you know, a novel for children, a story for children, but then also something that uh, adults have been known to uh, read and love as well. And it's also peopled by, um, peopled uh, by cute little rabbits. So, of course, what more could you need to possibly sell it to you? Um, so... I guess onto the story a little bit. Um, <laughs> you have this um, this rabbit who is sort of the head of his warren community of rabbits, uh, and he's just, his name is Hazel. Um, is a is a male, uh, despite the name Hazel, um, and uh, it's just sort of this everyday rabbit trying to make sense of his warren and his world and his universe when one of his friends. A fellow rabbit. They're all rabbits, by the way. Um, so I'm just going to stop saying rabbit. Uh, because they, they all are. There are people in the novel, but they're very much on the periphery. Um, one of his friends, whose name is Fiverr, he has a premonition about the Warren. And that it's going to be soon destroyed. And because of that, he wants to leave and find a go on a journey and search for another war and where they will be more safe. And this throws Hazel, who is sort of this sort of unassuming, everyday ho-hum rabbit, uh, into the unfamiliar role of being a leader in his attempt to convince as many of his fellow rabbits that they need to get out of there ASAP. And the, the rest of the novel is is a story that shapes up something like Joseph Campbell's take on Homer's Odyssey. You know, this whole sort of quest of the hero idea. Um, the rabbits come together and, and seek out a new home, but experience uh, innumerable obstacles along the way um, that they have to overcome. For example, they, they realize that they need female rabbits in order to uh, continue the war in uh, uh, whereas the, the, I think all of the ones that originally escaped were male. Um, and then they, they run into another Warren uh, when, they, when they try to um, meet some ladies, I guess. Um, <laughs> they run into another Warren ruled by the sort of authoritarian, iron-fisted General Woundwort. There are obvious themes uh, in the book, courage, honor, friendship, loyalty, um, the virtues of travel and getting out to know the world, 
And these are sharp and, and well delineated in a way that I would say recommends it more, more to children than adults because they're very sort of, um, uh, I don't want to say beat with a dead horse, but, but they're very emphasized. Which is not to say that adults can't enjoy it. Uh, at the same time, the book really does contain, contain its fair share of violence and characters that confront death in ways that pull few punches. That the book also wrestles with big ideas, and I wrote capital B, capital I, big ideas, is a fact that isn't really mentioned in a lot of reviews that I saw. Um, it, it does talk about some, some interesting adult things, uh, and not just violence. It talks about society and language, and how we relate to language it, the importance of storytelling and culture, and uh, and also the importance of uh, religion. There is, uh, for example, one one of the rabbits uh, is named Dandelion, and Dandelion is the rabbit who acts as sort of the group raconteur for the community when they are in times of strife and anxiety and discord. And Dandelion provides comfort to the other rabbits when he tells them stories of the mythical rabbit god, whose name is El Arrera. I think that's how you pronounce it. But this is clearly, uh, very clearly, <laughs> a, a, a reference to human, human religion, human myth-making, the comfort of people telling other people's stories in times of need. Um... And that's, that's an aspect of the story that children might miss, but that if you're even a somewhat careful adult reader, you'll easily pick up on. Before reading it, I found out that Adams frequently told his children stories on long car rides. One day, him and his two daughters were facing a much longer ride than usual, but they still wanted their story. And that day, Richard Adams narrated the bare bones of Watership Down, uh, which, was, which later his children convinced him to write down, to, to sort of flesh it out, add more detail, write it down, and publish it, which he did. And uh, also, it, uh, it was the basis for several other novels that he wrote. He, he based a few more books on it, and he actually turned into an author. He published something like eight or ten or twelve books over the course of his very long life. He only, he only died, I want to say, four, six, eight years ago. So, um, so he wrote it down, he got it published, published several of the books in the, in the uh, following years, and uh, knowing that it was originally intended for smaller children sort of shapes my reception of the book and my reading of the book. But I'm still uncomfortable in coming down absolutely one way or another and saying that it's either a children's book or it's not. I mean, some things are just a little bit more complicated than that, I think. It, it draws themes from kinds of writing, from both kinds of writing. And therefore, I think it can be both for children and adults. Um, now, I want to double check something. The, the only thing that might keep some people from thinking that it is uh, for children would be its length. My version is right at 470 pages. Uh, I'm not exactly a, a reader of young adult fiction, but I think that would probably be a little bit long for for some kids, maybe not. I don't know. It would all depend on the child. But um, I'm a lot more okay with that ambiguity now, uh, and it being for both audiences, than I was before I started the book. So um, if if this sort of sounds interesting, uh, I would I would recommend this to a certain kind of reader who uh, who maybe. Uh, read YA, but also read the occasional adult novel, because I think this really sits on the on the fence in a lot of ways, and it, and it deals with some interesting 
adult themes in in surprisingly adult ways, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't back down from the adult the the adult realities of the world and doesn't try to hide them from children. It's it's not dumbed down in that sort of way. Watership Down by Richard Adams. I will see you on Sunday with Volume 2, Episode 2 of the ongoing 2022 Library Tour. Bye.